This is one of the pre-post modules that covers the case where the same patients are followed at both time points. When same patients are followed over time, the barriers to interpretation and the possible responses to those barriers are essentially the same as the case where we measure different patients over time. Please see that other module for details. This slide illustrates the rationale for studying the same patients over time. In this idealized illustration, patients are quite heterogeneous at both times 1 and 2. Indeed, most of the variability in outcome at time 2 is due to the patient-to-patient -patient variation at time 1. When calculating a change score, each patient is essentially used as their own control. And the variation in the change scores in this case ranging from 2 to 5, is much less than the variation in the post scores, in this case, which ranges from 27 to 65. Because variation is the noise that's used in the signal-to-noise ratio, statistical analyses that use change scores will be much more powerful and precise than analyses that rely on post scores alone. In particular, a one-sample paired t-test which tests whether the mean of the chain scores differs from zero, will be much more powerful than a two-sample t-test, which assumes that the groups at times one and two are independent. Uh, for example, this circumstance might hold if the outcome is functional status, uh, because for functional status, where you end up strongly depends on where you start. I keep the previous table in mind when deciding whether or not to use chain scores. Or well, my mathematical way of formulating this decision pertains to the correlation between measurements at time 1 and time 2. The stronger this correlation, the greater is the benefit of using chain scores. If the correlation is low, for example, if where you end up is so strongly dependent on your idiosyncratic response to the intervention that where you started hardly matters, you'll be better off statistically just to use the post score as the response. Does using a change course response entirely account for the impact of the heterogeneity of patients at baseline? It turns out the answer is usually no, and that if the goal is to predict the change in the outcome, it helps to include baseline score as a covariate. Postponing for the moment the discussion of exactly when and how to do so, so long as the post score is included as a covariate, it really makes no essential difference whether the outcome is a post score or a change score. The next two slides will demonstrate why this is the case. This idea can, can be fairly helpful for your audience if one outcome is more natural than the other. For example, if it makes more sense for your audience to frame the analyses in terms of how much patients improve over time, you, you can certainly use the change score as the outcome. On the other hand, if it makes more sense that for them to frame the analyses in terms of how patients will look at the end of follow-up, then you can use the post score as the outcome. As notation, denote the time 1 value by x, the time 2 value by y, and the change score by d, that is set to say the difference between y and x. Since the difference score d just simply equals y minus x, we can change from the topmost regression, which uses y as the outcome variable, to the bottommost regression, which uses d as the outcome by subtracting x from both sides of the equation. The intercepts are the same, and the slopes differ exactly by one unit. In other words, beta x minus x equals beta minus 1 times x. Accordingly, if you know one regression, you know the other as well.